When many people see entertainers, celebrities, or those who are basically in the, you know, in your face, in the entertainment phase, they see the glitz and the glamour. What they don't get to see is the pain. And today, actor Scarlett Shorter Day comes out to share with us her story and basically how it was for her transiting from getting pregnant to losing her baby. I'd urge you to grab your tissues because this was a very tear-jerking one and not one dried eye was left in the room when we completed our interview with Scarlett as she shared with us things no one told you about motherhood. Hopefully, a mother to be in future. Growing up, I I had a lot of dreams and um, aspirations. I wanted to be everything. I wanted to be an actor, but it wasn't something I wanted so badly. You know, I grew up in the entertainment industry, and you know, when you see something too much, you just get tired of it, and you're like, well, maybe I don't want to do it. You know, so that kind that part of me was subdued for a while until you know. I had to start looking for ways to make ends meet, you know. We lost my dad and it was just myself and my mom, so I needed to put food on the table as well. Okay, so what can I do to make money? I can act that be okay, let me try an audition. Three months after I got a call from African Magic offering me my very first movie and I was the lead character. And it was fun, it was fun. I had challenges but in all it was it was it was fun. Growing up, I wanted to, everybody, every woman dreams of being a mother, you know. So I was looking forward to pregnancy. I wanted it so bad because, you know, sometimes you just see some women look so beautiful and they carry it effortlessly and you're like, yeah, I want to do this. So my first day ever of getting pregnant, um, I wasn't even, you know, it was more or less like, Yes, we've been trying. My husband and I had been trying. So at that point, I was already thinking, you know, is something wrong with me? We kept trying and trying, and it wasn't happening. And then we started, you know, praying, and I started feeling funny. And then for some reason, my period has not come. And then a week goes, two weeks, three weeks. When it was like four weeks, I'm like, I'm obviously pregnant. Like, why is my period not coming? So I bought this 15 hour strip thingy and I peed on the stick and he said it was positive and I almost lost my mind. I remember calling my mom, like even people I didn't need to tell that I was pregnant. We were so excited that every week we were always going to do a scan. <laughs> every week just to see how far the baby had gone, you know. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful. And then we, I think we got to three months and I just went to the toilet to pee normally. And you know, as usual, I would clean up and wipe and immediately I wiped, I saw blood. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, so they said it's normal in pregnancy. Sometimes you get to spots. But then deep inside, I was still freaking out, like, why am I bleeding and everything? So we went to the hospital in the morning, and I was expecting the doctor to say, okay, you're fine, just need to rest and everything. And the checkup was taking longer than usual. And I started panicking. I'm like, what's going on? You guys, tell me what's going on. And then I could see that they were holding back and he didn't want to say anything. And then he goes, okay, it's, it's like it's a threatened miscarriage, but there's nothing wrong. We just need to put you on rest, but you still need to go and do like a proper scan. Let's get the habits and everything. I'm like, okay, so immediately I left the room. I think he kind of just told my husband, you know what, we can't, I think the baby's dead. Then we got to the hospital and then I'm hearing them say, prepare her for evacuation. I'm like, Eva, Eva what? Like, you want to take my baby out of me, my baby, like the, the baby that I have in me? They said yes. I remember taking a walk. I went, I was just walking. I was just walking. In my mind, I'm like, I don't understand God. I prayed for this baby, and you gave the baby to me. So 
why are they saying they had to i'm like okay if you're really god then wake up this baby she they say you pre perform miracles right now i need my baby's heartbeat to be restored i need them to say oh they make it they made a mistake i'm walking back and i want to hear something different so i went back to the hospital and i told them to do another scan they said but i said do another scan and like i yelled at them even my husband i was yelling at him i was so cranky and then they did the scan and they said oh that it was fine now they had to do an evacuation i was so like i was so disappointed i remember i was just crying i was crying and crying i didn't even know how to call my mom to tell her that because she was excited i didn't know how to tell her that okay you know what we lost the baby it was just so sad for me because i had already bonded with the baby i remember waking up in the morning and talking to it and i just started playing all that back in my head i'm like so this is it I said yes i'm like okay so okay so let's, let's do it let's let's take it out you know i called my mom and i told her and she kind of just gingered me she spoke to me and then she just encouraged me so i went back to the doctor and I'm, i was like okay i'm ready normally if they do evacuation they should sedate you or make the pain but they couldn't do all that extensively because there were complications so i felt every single thing like the first traumatic thing for me was entering into the theater once i saw the chair i felt like a test like a lab rat that was about to you know like they were about to poke and dissect and everything and that chair just first broke me like i remember seeing the chair and i just broke down like no this is not happening and then i got on the chair you know they put my legs apart and everything and i could feel the doctor go in i felt every scrape i was screaming so much that even after the procedure was done and i came out i was hearing people saying congratulations because they thought i was in labor it was that bad and then after everything was done and I was hearing babies cry, it was just so traumatic for me. And I saw people, even as I, they were taking mine out, somebody was giving birth in my mind. I'm like, this is not meant to be. My husband was so supportive. He was really supportive. It was so bad that, you know, when things like this happen, as a woman, you don't even know that the husband is hurting as well. You tend, like, you tend to internalize things. You think, oh, I was the one that carried it, so I'm the one feeling the most pain. So I kind of ignored how my husband felt. I didn't even think he had the right to tell me he felt some certain way. To me, I felt he didn't understand how I felt. I was the one that carried this child. So nobody had the right to tell me how to, you know, grieve. So in my mind, I just felt like, oh, the most you did was just try to be there for me and made sure that you know carrying the pregnancy was easier not knowing that he was hurting it was way after like some four months after that when we were you know finally healing and everything that he opened up to me and said you know there was a day he was driving on third mainland he saw a truck and there was just his voice that said you know what drive into the truck like he was ready to do it this was also his child you know he was also excited that was going to be his first child and everything so I just, you know, we, try, we tried as much as possible. It was hard, but we got over it. And we started trying again, and then nothing happened. And it was taking longer than usual. I'm like, you know what, I think I'm ready to see the guy, you know. Let them check, I'm sure there's something wrong, because how can I be trying? Like, I've been trying for over a year after that, and nothing is happening. And for some reason, I just started feeling weird. So I wanted to take anti-malaria drugs, and we do this all the time. Like, when I'm taking anti-malaria, I first check if I'm not pregnant so that, you know, I don't affect anything. And my husband says, ah, did you pee on the stick? Have you checked if you're, I'm like, uh, to tell you how much, hope I had lost. I just looked at him like, I'm not pregnant. If I was pregnant, I would know. I got into the bathroom and for some reason, my spirit was just not rested. And something was just telling me that, okay, you would regret it if at all you now find out you're pregnant. I'm like, you know what? It won't hurt for me to pee on a stick. Let me just pee on the stick. I peed on the stick and he said I was pregnant. It was positive. I lost my mind. At first, I sat down on the bathroom floor and I cried. Like in my mind, I was crying because I was happy. At the same time, I was crying because I could have done something wrong, you know? I had lost hope that much. I didn't even think it was possible for me to get pregnant. But we decided to do things differently this time, you know? We decided to keep it quiet because in our mind, we didn't want to do anything wrong. As happy as I was, I didn't tell my mom I was pregnant. 
If I, I didn't tell her till I was three months gone, we wanted to make sure that we passed that three months mark because the last time we lost the baby was three months. So we said, you know what, we're just going to take it easy till the first trimester is over. They said the first trimester is the most delicate. So once we go through the first trimester, we're just going to tell my mom and that's the only person we're going to tell till we're ready you know we were going for tests all the time and then every time we went to do the test we'll ask the doctor is the baby fine the moment they tell us the baby's fine the relief that we just say you know sometimes every morning my husband once he wakes up the next thing asks me has the baby moved I'm like yes the baby has moved like okay 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 we waited to like four months and when it was four months I called my mom and I told her I was pregnant my mom was so happy but before then something tragic had happened you know after the first one happened we were just getting over it and then they just called me and told me that I had lost my brother in an accident in London and that was the only sibling I had I wanted to run mad in my mind I'm like no you guys have to be joking I can't lose my father and then the only person that I have as a father figure in my life is gone that's impossible we're just three left now that my brother is gone just me and my mom left like how do we do this and I was just so lost I started crying and everything I remember going into the bathroom and crying to God and I told God do you know what I don't even care just return my brother to me just I've been trying to get pregnant I have not been pregnant this time around I want to be pregnant and give me a male child I want my brother back that's all I know I've always wanted a girl but this time around I want a boy and a month after that was when we found out we were pregnant it, it didn't seem like a coincidence because our home we had been trying for so long and it was the day I asked God that I want to get I wanted to get pregnant because I lost my brother and then a month later I got pregnant you know at the same time we were paranoid you know because we lost the first one so we were trying to be careful when I was like six months gone we went for a check and then the doctor now said um, your placenta is lying low I'm like well I've never heard of it before what does that mean he said that means um he said sometimes it happens like that in pregnancy but if it doesn't change that means you you can't have the normal delivery you have to do cs but then that was like the smallest of prices to pay for having a child you know when i'm like ah, people do cs now that is no big deal no problem and then they kept saying that oh the cervix was also you know short and everything so that means that the baby could we could lose the pregnancy as well so they placed me on bed rest and you know we're taking things easy we're going for checkups and then they were saying it was better and one day we just went and they said oh the placenta had gone to the normal you know we were ecstatic we were so happy we're like okay so now i can have normal delivery and everything they said yes it wasn't as beautiful as i thought it was going to be Every pregnancy is not the same. The first time you get pregnant will be different from the second time and everything, and it's different from every, for every woman. So I didn't get that appetite loss and everything. I was eating and everything. But you see, I didn't want to go out for any reason. I couldn't sleep at night. I had terrible heartburn also. The heartburn was terrible. The back pain was terrible. At some point when I got to seven months, I started having pelvic pain. I couldn't walk properly anymore. They'll tell you that the best way for you to sleep when you're pregnant is on the side. But even sleeping on the side for me was terrible because of the pelvic pain. So I had to always wake up every five minutes to alternate. In the morning, getting up from the bed was horrible. I couldn't stand up. They would literally have to come and pull me up from the bed. The body changes were horrible. And then at six months, I went to bed, I woke up, and it was like I swallowed an elephant. I started battling with weight and everything, and then they were telling me to watch my sugar intake. Sometimes you will have this heat rush, like everywhere, there's, the AC is on, everybody's okay, and you just feel hot all of a sudden. You know, sometimes you're working normally, and the next minute you're dizzy, you know? Things like that. It was so bad that I told my husband that, you know what, I don't even think I want to do this pregnancy thing again. Some people have it, have it easy, but for me, it wasn't fun. And I wish people had told me that truth. Because I remember doing my baby shower and people were telling me, oh, you know, you're just going to push. Yes, it is painful, but you know, um, when labor came in, <laughs> Anyway, long and short, I was in labor for like 16 hours. 
At some point, I said, you know what? I want a epidural. I'm not doing it again. They don't give an award for who felt the pain the most. Give me a epidural. The needle was almost this long, and they had to put it in through your spine. And every time the needle was going in, every layer, I felt it. When the child did it, I just felt there was this relief that just came. But because I was on epidural, I won't be able to tell when I'm on contraction, like when I'm contracting and everything. So they needed to, you know, monitor me. But for some reason, I don't know if they were not familiar with epidural or they don't have experiences with it. The matrons will come in and ask me, are you contracting? I'm like, how am I supposed to know when I'm contracting? Like, I can't feel anything down here. You are the ones that are supposed to come and tell me. For some reason, I just started feeling very uncomfortable, you know? So I told her to please. I was the one even telling her what to do, you know? I said, please come and help me check the heart rate of this baby. The doctor said you should be checking at every interval. Check the heart rate, you know? While she was checking, she would check the first, the first time she checked, we heard the beats. The second time we heard, the third time we was faint, we couldn't hear anything. So I told her, I said, why are we not hearing the baby's heart beats? I started seeing the look on his face like he was worried. So I started asking him, I was paranoid, I said, what? At that point, I, I, I was so, like in my mind, I'm like, not again, nothing can happen to this baby. Nothing can happen to this baby. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.